Things are getting worse in Afghanistan, and the Taliban is being the Taliban. What's worse, it looks like Al-Qaeda and ISIS have joined them. Joe Biden is looking more incompetent, and his cabinet looks like they're getting nervous about it. This is Gene. You're listening to Dumbasses Talking Politics. Hey, hey, welcome back to Dumbasses Talking Politics. I'm sorry I was gone last week. I took a trip up to L.A., see the, vo- see the father. I hate doing a podcast in front of him because he just sits there and stares at me. He won't say anything. Now, I told you I wasn't going to talk a lot about Afghanistan because there's just too much to talk about, but I think there's something more important on the horizon if one actually looks at the uh, some of the messaging that's going on from not Biden himself, but his cabinet. So let's go over Afghanistan, talk about it for a bit, and then well, at the end we'll talk about what I think is going to end up happening. And it's not just in Afghanistan. So, over there it's a mess, and it just keeps getting worse. Uh, in a few minutes, we'll talk about what the Biden administration is doing and not doing. As I speak right now, there have been updates. This is one of the reasons why I'd rather talk about culture or things like that. But, let's get into it. Um, yesterday morning, there was a, host, quote, hostile actor, end quote, that started shooting at the airport. Several were wounded. One Afghan soldier was killed. No coalition forces were killed. So that was good. Uh, Now, I love the term hostile actor because it doesn't say anything. This is a big problem they're having over there. Now we know Al-Qaeda is already there. And we know the Taliban is the Taliban. But now it appears there's there's a, a sect of ISIS has also moved up in that area. So let's see. You've got Taliban control with Al-Qaeda and ISIS running through Kabul. Now, this could be a good thing, actually, believe it or not, because it, it well, good and bad. It could be good because Al-Qaeda and ISIS, which is called ISIS-K, it's a different sect of ISIS than the ones that Trump eliminated, um, they don't like each other. And so there could be some fighting. We may end up seeing some fighting between those two. And that could actually cause some internal strife. That's the good news. The bad news is, if there's fighting, there's always going to be someone around them that's going to get killed. So, again, you're looking at, like, warring factions. And that's what the Taliban are. They're nothing but a bunch of little factions, little tribes. And that's what's going to end up happening with the Taliban. The Taliban has also set up multiple checkpoints blocking access to the airport. Some of these checkpoints go seven deep. So the deeper you are into city, the more you have to go through. One person reported that she had to go through 20 checkpoints to get to the airport and she never made it. Um, At these checkpoints, Americans who try to get to the airport are having real problems getting there. It appears that that, uh, the Taliban is when they show their American passport, the Taliban is actually taking their passports and then beating the crap out of everybody in the car. So, right now, to sit back and say this is a hostage crisis and people are trapped would be an understatement because that's exactly what's happening. But leave it to the Biden administration. Jen Psaki, this is just an amazing, an amazing clip. And I didn't know if... I even was going to put it in here, but I am going to put it in here. Listen to this. Does the president have a sense that most of the criticism is not of leaving Afghanistan? It's the way that he has ordered it to happen by pulling the troops before getting these Americans who are now stranded. Does he have a sense of that? First of all, I think it's irresponsible to say Americans are stranded. They are not. We are committed to bringing Americans who want to come home home. We are in touch with them via phone, via text, via email, via any way that we can possibly reach Americans to get them home if they want to return home. There are no Americans stranded is the White House's official position on what's happening in Afghanistan. Right I'm now. just calling you out for saying that we are stranding Americans in Afghanistan when I said, when we have been very clear that we are not leaving Americans who want to return home. We are going to bring them home. And I think that's important for the American public to hear and understand. Go ahead. Incredibly tone deaf and an absolute lie. Representative Carol Miller 
received a phone call from a person, a woman, in Afghanistan, and she can't get out. She can't get to the airport, and she is begging for help. This is probably one of the most disturbing 27-second videos I've ever seen. Listen. <laughs> hour by hour, it's getting more difficult. <laughs> Even when the cars pass by, I feel like they're going to stop by the door and they're the tall one and they're going to come in and kill us. <laughs> I'm really scared. Please, just... <laughs> Please help me whenever it's the soonest. <laughs> Does that sound like there's no one being held in Afghanistan? They don't even know how many people are in Afghanistan right now. That's what's really disturbing. And it's going to get worse for those people. And she's right. She has every right to be scared. Especially when we take a look at what the Biden administration is actually doing with this mess. Because they have not stopped. And the United States openly said, we're going to get everyone out of there, but we can't guarantee your safety. You just have to get to the airport. And what these people are complaining about is they can't get to the airport because of all the checkpoints. They're having their papers taken away. They're being beaten up. It's impossible for Americans to get to the airport. And and what exactly is this character doing? The situation at the airport is getting worse. The temps, uh, the crowds are still there. And the temps are over 90 degrees, between 90 and 100 degrees. People are getting heat stroke in the street. U.S. troops are trying to give water to the people who are waiting to get into the airport. Who knows how many Americans? The Afghanis are spraying uh, water hoses, trying to cool the, pe the crowds up. Children are passing out. The crowds are also so heavy that people are being trampled. This week, a two-year-old child was trampled to death. It's just, it's, it's absolutely, everything is out of control. And the violence continues. The violence continues, and it's all on film. Translators who help the United States are being pulled from their homes and hung. And we have film of that. Houses that have women of a certain age must have an X marked on the house so that the Taliban can take the women away, enslave them into sex slavery, or marry them off. Any house that doesn't have an X, the whole family is just killed. According to Fox News, and this isn't something new, they're actually killing, they're actually setting women on fire if they don't know how to cook. Women who have painted nails are having their fingers cut off. So it's just absolutely incredible. And then what's worse, the United States said they would pull out by August 31st. Well, today, the Biden administration will leave on August 31st. Why? Because the Taliban tells them so. He told them, we're now taking orders from the Taliban. Listen to this. If the US or the UK wanted to extend the 31st of August deadline in order to continue evacuations out of the country, would you agree to that? No, no. Why not? It, 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 this is something you can say it's a red line. While there is no need for that, I think it will deteriorate the relation that will create mistrust between us. If they are intent on continuing the occupation, so it will provoke a reaction. So you hear that? They're threatening us. And Biden caved. I'm waiting for Biden's speech today. On Tuesday, he spoke to the G7. And the G7, everyone, Britain, Switzerland, even Switzerland, for Christ's sake, all of them had said, we need to, see, we need to extend that August 7th, that, uh, 31st deadline. And the reason we need to extend that August 31st deadline is because the United States being there is still scaring the crap out of ISIS, the Taliban, and all of them. They don't want to deal with ISIS and the Taliban. 
They don't want to deal with the United States. But if we pull out, suddenly Britain and France, they just lost their support. Biden, I mean, my God, the United States is a bad ally. Great for our enemies, but a really bad ally. And so I'm waiting for Joe Biden to come up and explain exactly why are you pulling out on August 31st? I'm telling you one thing. Uh, we're probably going to go back in. I would be absolutely surprised, especially when the videos come out. I would be absolutely surprised if we didn't go back into Afghanistan. And I, <laughs> and all we needed to do was keep 2,500 guys in there and the Taliban would have been taken care of. So what's the Biden administration doing? Not a heck of a lot. Here's what's happening. Um, the Biden administration continues to say that the Americans will get out of Afghanistan. There are a couple of problems with this. One, the Biden administration has no idea how many Americans are there. Currently, all of the two, uh, people they're taking out, I believe it's around 15,000, only 10% of those are American. They're all Afghanis that they're actually pulling out. There are no plans by the government on how they're going to get them out. There are no plans by the government on going in to get them like Britain and France are doing. They're telling Americans to get to the airport. They can't guarantee their safety, but just get to the airport and you'll get out. Well, the problem is they can't get through the checkpoints because of what the Taliban's doing. And then when they get to the airport, there's such chaos at the airport, they can't get into the airport. The administration has been lying. They said they have pulled out 30,000 people. That's a bold face lie. He's combining what the French and the British are doing. The French and the British are actually flying in, grabbing people and flying back to the airport. They're doing something. At the time that he actually said that, there were 12,000 people pulled by the United States and only about 1,000 of them were Americans. He, he refuses, Biden administration refuses to expand the perimeter around the airport. There are now shoot, there are shootings happening around the airport because they refuse to push people back, because he's afraid that it might cause a military conflict with the Taliban. I mean, just incredible. The Biden administration plans uh, is considering now plans on bombing our equipment that they decided to leave there. So they're actually looking to um, bomb all those Apache helicopters and Cobras we left over there. <laughs> Maybe you should have pu like pulled those out instead of thinking about how to bomb them. The Biden administration has implemented the Civil Reserve Air Fleet, or CRAF. And what this is, is this is something from the, um, the post-World War II Berlin airlift when the communists split Berlin in two. And the Americans were actually put it, bringing um, supplies to Berlin. So this is an ancient thing. It hasn't been used since 1952. And they're, they're going to implement this with 20 commercial jets. Now, what this means is it's not those jets, those commercial de jets like Delta, American, Hawaiian. Air, yes, Hawaiian Airlines. So those 20 passenger jets, they're not going into Afghanistan. They're going to go into other countries around Afghanistan that are actually taking in the refugees, the people that are escaping. And then those people are going to supposedly go through background checks. I'm not so sure that's going to end up well either. And then they're going to be put on those, board those planes and taken back to the United States. Can you imagine if you're in Hawaiian Airlines... And you're a crew member for Hawaiian Airlines, and now you got to fly over to to Qatar. Oh my lord! For some reason, Biden was supposed to go to Delaware this past weekend for another vacation. Now, mind you, he took a vacation at Camp David a week before, and then he needed another vacation. Wow. You know, I just remember 
all the shit they gave Trump, all the shit they gave Trump about how often he played golf. And meanwhile, this bozo is taking vacations every week. Absolutely incredible. Um, so, and I already told you about the, I already told you about the uh, August 31st deadline, which he will not extend. The August 31st deadline is locked. We are pulling out. It doesn't matter how many Americans are there. And I'm going to say it, stranded, because they are stranded. Now, you might be asking, like, where the hell is Kamala Harris? I, she hasn't said a word. She said maybe two words about the, ta- about the Afghanistan debacle since, she, since this whole thing happened. Um, this is kind of important, as we shall see a little later. She's going to be the next president in a couple months. Uh, we'll talk more about that later, but it, let's be honest. She's going to be the president. Joe Biden is looking terrible. He sounds terrible. He's not going to make it. He'll either resign or he's going to be taken out via the 25th Amendment. Well, again, we're going to talk about that because it, it's coming. Well, she decided that it was the perfect time to head to Vietnam and Singapore on a uh, diplomatic mission. They really need to fire her travel coordinator because the, it, it, the timing is just absolutely terrible. <laughs> She had this to say at the airport when she was taking off. What's your response to a group of Americans? Hold on, hold on. Slow down, everybody. <laughs> um, I want to talk about two things. First, Afghanistan. We couldn't have a higher priority right now. And in particular, our priority is making sure that we safely evacuate American citizens. Afghans who work with us, Afghans at risk, including women and children. And that is one of our highest, if not the highest priority right now. I just want to point out, this is a really bad answer. And this is a gal who bitches constantly when someone cuts her off. And now she's cutting off the reporter. She has no issue to do it to someone else, but she'll be the first one to scream sexist when when, um, she gets cut off. The other problem is, is that laugh. She's really got to stop laughing. I know she's gotten a lot better at it. Well, I don't think she's gotten a lot better at it. I just think she does less interviews. But she's, when she, it's like a nervous tick. And Biden does the same thing. Um, Her answer, she hasn't, she talked about, she she hasn't talked about this at all, and that was a weak need answer. It wasn't an answer. First off, it's a lie. The Biden administration doesn't care about the people in Afghanistan. It doesn't. I'm sorry, it doesn't. They wouldn't be pulling out on August 31st. She had to have known that. Then she went to Singapore and was asked about the pullout. According to Fox News, I'm going to quote here from Fox News. Quote, so I understand and appreciate why you asked the question. And I think there's going to be plenty of time to analyze what happened and what has taken place in the context of the withdrawal of Afghanistan, the vice president said. But right now we are singularly focused on evacuating American citizens, Afghans who worked with us, and Afghans who are vulnerable, including women and children. Harris added, we have a responsibility and we feel the deep commitment to making sure that folks who helped us are safe. The vice president went on to praise Bo- President Biden for having shown, quote, shown great emotion and expressing sadness about some of the images we have seen, end quote, but reiterated that the U.S. cannot be, quote, distracted in any way what must be our primary mission right now, which is evacuating people in the region who deserve to be evacuated. You know who didn't agree with that? The Singapore Prime Minister, Lee Hai Sain Long. He didn't buy this crap. He he didn't obviously get the narrative sheet from MSN, MSNBC because he basically said no. This is what he said. According to Fox News, Lee was asked about American credibility in light of current events and said that what happens next will be key for how the U.S. is perceived in the future. 
quote, what will influence perceptions of the U.S. resolve and commitment to the region will be what the U.S. does going forward, how it repositions itself in the region, how it engages its broad range of friends and partners and allies in the region, and how it continues to fight against terrorism, Lee said. He continued, countries make calculations and take positions, and they have to make calculations and adjust their positions from time to time, Lee continued. Sometimes it can be done smoothly. Sometimes there are hiccups. Sometimes things go awry and take time to put right. Yeah, she just got called out. And you don't forget, the Biden administration said that all of the allies were for this U.S. withdrawal. And they didn't think the U.S. withdrawal was that big of a deal. Well, guess what? You got an ally in Singapore saying, yeah, this is a big deal. And we'll have to see how the U.S. handles this. And whether or not we have to adjust our foreign policy because you can't trust the United States. Absolutely awesome. But here's the thing. This is why I brought this whole thing up. This is why I brought this whole thing up. The cat is out of the bag. We're talking about the elephant in the room. We are now yelling that the emperor doesn't have any clothes on. The competency of Joe Biden is now on question. And it's not just the right that's questioning it. A CBS News poll found that close to 70% of Americans think Joe Biden has botched the Afghan pullout and is incompetent to be president. Listen to this, qu this question at his last press conference where he was asked exactly that. Public response. A new poll out today shows Americans wanted to withdraw from Afghanistan, but they disapprove of the way you've handled it. Poll also found that based in part on what's transpired in the last week, a majority of Americans, and forgive me, I'm just the messenger, no longer consider you to be competent, focused, or effective in the job. I haven't what seen you, that poll. It's out there um, from CBS this morning. Um, <laughs> what would you say to those Americans who no longer believe that you're up to the job? I had a basic decision to make. I either withdraw... America from a 20-year war that, depending on whose analysis you accept, cost us $150 million. Okay, this is, again, he goes, he does the same thing he always does. He starts talking about, he starts talking about why he pulled people out of Afghanistan. <clears throat> no one is questioning, that's a different debate. No one is questioning why he pulled troops out. They're questioning why he did it in the way he did it. No one's questioning the pullout of the troops. I'm beginning to think, I mean, even I'm not questioning that much. Though, with here, knowing now what, knowing now, I would probably not have pulled troops out because there just weren't that many troops and we actually just weren't fighting them that often. But no one's questioning him on that. And also, a couple of things. What is he laughing at? Remember I told you. These guys get nervous, and the first thing they start doing is laughing. This was a good question. And he never... He, he, he went on in his answer. He actually did blame Trump again. Because that's got to be the narrative. That this is Trump's fault. Not that Trump had nothing to do with the pullout. And never pulled anyone out. The other thing that's interesting in that he, he actually talked on for three minutes. He never answered anything about competency. He refused to answer. He just said, hey, I did what it, I needed to do. That's what I needed to do. So, but it does get worse because it's not just Biden that's taking crap for competency. Now his secretary of state his defense, Secretary of Defense, who are also under the fire, they're beginning to, you know, throw people under the bus because they got to protect themselves. This is on Fox this Sunday, and Chris Wallace pretty much really laid into uh, Anthony, uh, Secretary of State Antony Blinken and flat out said, why are you guys lying? And the answer is just amazing. Here's another statement that the president made that was flat wrong. Take a look. 
I have seen no question of our credibility from our allies around the world. I've got it. The exact opposite thing is we're acting with dispatch. We're acting, committing to what we said we would do. But Armin Laschet, the likely successor to German Chancellor Merkel, said this is the biggest debacle that NATO has seen since its foundation. And here is the chairman of the British Parliament's Foreign Affairs Committee. To see their commander-in-chief call into question the courage of men I fought with, to claim that they ran, shameful. Those who have never fought for the colors they fly should be careful about criticizing those who have. Mr. Secretary, does the president not know what's going on? This is an incredibly emotional time uh, for, for many of us, uh, and including allies and partners who've been shoulder to shoulder with us in Afghanistan for 20 years. Uh, at high cost to themselves, as well as to us. They stood with us after 9-11, invoked Article 5 of NATO for the first time, an attack on one is an attack on all, and we've been there together. But I've got to tell you this, Chris, from the get-go, uh, I've spent more time with our NATO partners in Brussels, virtually, uh, from before the President made his decision, to when he made his decision, to every time since. We've been working very, very closely together. We've gotten the G7 together, NATO together, the UN Security Council together. We had 113 sure. countries, thanks to our diplomacy, uh, put out a, a clear understanding uh, of the Taliban's requirements to let people sir, leave sir, the country. Sir, respectfully, that, that, look, I'm not, I'm not questioning whether or not the Allies have a right to complain. I'm not questioning whether or not Al-Qaeda has a presence. The President said Al-Qaeda is gone. It's not gone. The President said he's not heard any criticism from the Allies. There's been a lot of criticism from the Allies. Words matter, and the words of the President matter most. I mean, wow. I couldn't believe what I heard from Chris Wallace. Because Chris Wallace, remember the debate he moderated, I, he went after Trump. He liked Biden. He, he was joking with Biden during that during that uh, debate. And he went after and just tore this guy apart. And by the way, Blinken's answer was a crappy answer in several ways. First off, emotional? Everyone's emotional? Really? At this point, shouldn't you guys be reasonable and not emotional don't let your emotions get in the way i mean what an incredible answer and do you notice what he did what anthony Bil Blink blinken did and you're seeing this a lot now um he explained what he did i mean he's a terrible secretary of state don't get me wrong he's garbage human being as mccain said and I'm no McCain fan, but McCain said that during the, the Obama administration. He was a garbage human being. But Blinken was sitting here, well, I've done this and I've done this. He didn't defend. He never discussed the competency of Joe Biden. He only discussed, um, he only discussed what he did. Now, there could be two reasons. He wants to deflect the question. Or he's really worried people are going to blame him for this. Or Joe Biden really jacked this whole thing up. And why are we so worried about what the Taliban wants? I, I, I don't really care what the Taliban wants. They, I mean, these guys just crawled out of caves. They live in tents. They don't shower. They have sex with goats. This is not a group I really care about what they think and what they want. But what's scary and shows weakness that everyone is pointing out now is this shows the weakness of this Biden administration and how we can be pushed around by a bunch of piss ants like the Taliban. Again, I don't like it, but I love the fact that Chris Wallace just, I don't like him, but I love that he went right at him. But see, this circling of the wagons isn't just with Anthony Bil Blinken. I don't think it's a coincidence that Kamala Harris is out of the country. I think she wants to avoid this. Now she's, of course, when you're going to our allies, you're not going to avoid this because you're going to say, what the hell are you guys doing? 
Oh, she wants to avoid this or not see? Thank God she didn't go to Germany or Britain. They have nothing good to say about this whole thing. Or France or any other country. They have nothing good. They say we were idiots to leave. And now we're not extending the deadline. They're, with their recommendation. They had a meeting with the G7 today. And all of the G7 said... We need to stay in Afghanistan until we're done. Until everyone is pulled out. It's not just Americans. It's French. It's British. It's Italian. We need to get them all out. The United States needs to be there to support them as well as them supporting uh, Germany. That's the other one. That, um, us supporting, it's us supporting them as much as them supporting us. They need to work together. And Biden said no. Biden said no. I'm still waiting for his, his press conference. Do you realize Joe Biden is between 45 and two hours late for every press conference? I guess Matlock is having a double today. Lloyd Austin is doing the same thing with the circling of the wagons. He wouldn't talk about what he told Biden as far as Afghanistan. And the reason is because I think that's more protect protecting Biden. But I think the reason he did that was because he told Biden not to get out, not to pull out. But the other thing, which was insane, is he contradicted Joe Biden an hour after Joe Biden said. Joe Biden said the the, uh, uh, Al-Qaeda has no presence in, in Kabul. They have no presence in Afghanistan. Hour later, Lloyd Austin, the defense secretary, said, yes, Al-Qaeda is not only in Afghanistan, they are in Kabul, and people and Taliban and uh, Al-Qaeda leadership is actually going across, and yes, between 18 months and two years, we're going to have to worry about a terrorist attack. Blinken did the same thing. Blinken actually contradicted Biden about something else. I can't remember what it was. I think it was the number of U.S. Or no, he said that the U.S. citizens in Afghanistan were safe. And Blinken said, um, they're not safe and we can't guarantee their safety. So, I mean, these guys are beginning to contradict Joe Biden. You know why? He's a disaster. He's not going to be president much longer. And here are my predictions. So before I get to that, here are my predictions. And I wrote them down. Joe Biden is finally being seen as impaired. He is being seen as the old, senile man he is. Joe Biden and Hunter Biden should be ashamed of themselves for what they did to this man. And by the way, Barack Obama, he, the famous quote, don't underestimate the amount, uh, don't underestimate Joe Biden's ability to F something up. Oh, he's F quite a bit up. The cabinet be, is beginning to defend themselves. And they're beginning to tell the truth, which is in contradiction to Joe Biden's lies. Why are they doing that? Because their political careers are in jeopardy. Joe Biden's political career is over after these four years. If he goes that, he's not going to go that far. By the end of the year, he'll be out of office. That would be a fantastic thing if he ends up out of office. It will actually skunk the Democrats till 2022, probably 2024. Kamala Harris is also separating herself from the situation. She's trying to protect herself. But the reality is she's looking really bad doing it. So you can see right off the bat, the cabinet is beginning, the press is beginning to ask him, hey, do you even know what's going on? And it's not Fox News, Reuters, CNN. CNN had an article about the competency of Joe Biden. And finally, you see something that happened this weekend. Nancy Pelosi is trying to combine this $3.5 trillion budget with the $1.2 billion a trillion infrastructure bill. She said that this weekend, we're going to combine it and we're going to send it to the Senate. It's never going to get through. You know why? He's not going to be president in two months. Be, the writing is on the wall. They got to get this thing passed. 
right now before Biden ends up uh, ro- losing his presidency. I am saying right now Biden will either have to resign or the his cabinet will sign the uh, 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 sign a bill for the 20 uh, enacting the 25th amendment and that will happen within the next 90 days. And by the way, this isn't going to get better in Afghanistan. I am also predicting we're probably going back. Why? And again, soldiers will die. Why? Because those videos are coming out. And wait till they start beheading Americans and using their little, you know, 1930s cell phones to to record it. That is coming. And when that stuff happens, you better believe that this whole thing is going to end. That we're going to have to go back in to save them. Okay, uh, visit my website at dumbassestalkingpolitics.com. I have a load of links there. Uh, that I, I, matter of fact, I have links there that I didn't even read on on air. So I got tons of stuff. Uh, Joe Biden again is two hours late, so I'm not exactly sure what's going on. I'm going to listen to uh, Jen Psaki make an ass out of herself like she usually does. I hope you guys have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow. This is Gene, and you've listened to Dumbasses Talking Politics. Mm-hmm.